Hello everybody once more, this is Steve from CELTAHelper.com and I'm back in 2018 to help you along your CELTA journeys. So this week I have an answer to some common questions, not a direct question from any one individual, but just some tips that I wanted to share with you, particularly about the first teaching practice or TP1. So mainly I just wanted to give you three mistakes to avoid in TP1 because I know a lot of people get really worried about it, really stressed. I know I did. It was a big moment for me on the CELTA course. But these are three key things that you can avoid that so many CELTA trainees have problems with. I know I did. And if you do avoid them, then it should be a lot easier for you because you've already identified things in advance that many people don't even know about. So let's start. The first thing to avoid on your first teaching practice or in TP1 is too much teacher talking time or TTT as it is called often on the CELTA course because your trainers will talk about it a lot. So now you might be thinking, well, teacher talking time, that means the time the teacher is talking and the teachers must talk because they're teachers. Yes, that's true. Okay, it is the time you're talking, but in ELT, it's a slight distinction from any other disciplines, particularly, for example, university lecturers who stand up there and just talk because a lecture really means a reading. Yeah. ELT teachers, you want to stand there and you need to guide the students. You can use very brief instructions and you can use prompts. The way I think of it, and I might have said this before, is to think of yourself like the conductor of an orchestra. You're not the lead musician. You are the person guiding everyone in that room to make the music sound good or to speak good English. And you do this with gestures and movements that everyone understands. You don't just have to talk to the students to get your point across, is my main point. So what you need to really do is to avoid talking excessively when students don't understand because nerves come into this and a lot of people start talking when they're nervous, especially, and I had this myself, when you ask a question, you don't get a response straight away, you might start getting nervous and start talking and talking more. But the problem is the students might not understand the question. So therefore, talking more is unlikely to help them. You could rephrase the question in briefer terms or in a shorter way but just continuously talking is not likely going to solve the question so what can you do you can as I said use many gestures movements to help you you can slow yourself down and you can use the board now hopefully when you're writing your lesson plans also these steps will become clear because the stages you see, you should start to see, and this might not happen for TP1, but you should start to see the progression and how you have to introduce concepts. You can't just start on a concept and go straight into it. You've got to build up to it. So think about asking the students questions to help them get involved in the process okay, of understanding. Because it's not all about the actual point you're learning. You think about it from the meta perspective from above, it's actually just getting them to understand a native speaker as well or somebody else in English. So think about that and involve the students by asking them short, snappy questions as you go. Now, these questions could just have yes or no answers and they could be one or two and you'll be asked to write them down on your lesson plan. These might also be known as concept checking questions or CCQs. And if you prepare these, it shouldn't be a problem and it should also help you to prepare for that teacher talking time to keep it to a minimum. Because really, the students are the ones who want to do the most, you want to do the most talking. So think about that. And also, crucially, think about how you will respond if you have a silent room when you are giving instructions, particularly to very low level students. That's really key. Okay, point two, and this is connected to teacher talking time. One major problem trainees have is not grading their language. Now, grading language or graded language, I should say, is very simply changing how you speak to suit the learners. Now, 
you can imagine if you give the same set of instructions to an upper intermediate level and to an elementary level it's likely that the elementary level are going to have more difficulty with this so you need to think about how you're going to word them particularly if you're having lower level students or if you're teaching lower level students now your instructions again much of this comes out in the lesson plan but be thorough with that lesson plan and it will help you just make sure that your questions aren't full of big words words they don't know or they are unlikely to know and long complex instructions as i mentioned about the ccqs or the concept checking questions just try to build in a couple of yes or no questions into each stage of instructions so that the students can go on the journey of understanding the task as you take them through it so it's not all about you just telling them and hoping they've understood it happens all the time in elt classrooms that students don't understand now i'm not saying that doing this will make everyone understand every time but if you get let's say 80 percent on board then the others can pull them through so just think about that as well and if they don't understand a task and this is an extra point you can don't be afraid to stop them and bring them back and just run through the questions again or something similar to check the understanding but grade your language appropriately and think about how you are speaking to them and try to identify these words you know you don't need to speak like you're talking to a friend just speak like you are talking to a low level group of students and it shouldn't be a problem for you and number three a very common thing to do in celta tp1 is planning too much this i am most certainly guilty of even to today some even today sometimes it's because the time how long it takes to do things is so hard to know when you start out it's still hard when you do new things but you get a better idea over time however you shouldn't worry too much about this because on your lesson plan it asks for very specific minutes and timings and if you do this really thoroughly you will start to see how long things can take now i said earlier perhaps they don't understand your questions if you ask them questions and you have a silent room how long are you going to wait you might wait maybe 10 seconds yeah but if this happens a couple of times and then you have to rethink and change things or write something on the board all of these can add minutes to your lesson plan or they can account for minutes in your lesson plan when you might not even think of them as a problem so what i would say is when you be generous with your timings because i used to think oh that won't take long but in reality when you're in front of a group of students and you might have to write on the board you might have to turn around you might have to stop someone who's doing something annoying all these little things can add in i would say plan for about 80 percent of the time you think it will take now write your numbers for more than that add longer but do what you think will take about 80 percent of the time sounds a bit scary to do it that way but i always used to over plan and i was then struggling to re to rejig things as i went along what i would say is just perhaps instead plan for 80 percent and then have a fun activity at the end just in case maybe some quick game like bingo or something relevant if you can do it hangman whatever classic little quick game like that just to fill a couple of minutes if you need but the most common thing is for people to over plan because they're worried about standing there with nothing to say and it almost never happens that way especially if you've completed the plan properly and in the right amount of detail so there you have it three key mistakes to avoid if you do that and you plan for these you'll be ahead of so many people so try to keep your ttt or teacher talking time to a minimum remember to grade your language appropriately now also i should say there you don't want to talk to higher levels like they are children or not very good at english you need to talk to them in a higher or advanced way as well and plan for about 80 percent of what you think will fill the time because you're probably going to take longer than you think with it if you do those things tp1 on your celta course should be fine and you shouldn't have any major issues hope that's useful let me know if you have any more questions you can get me at stephen beale s-t-e-p-h-e-n b-e-a-l-e on twitter or facebook.com forward slash celta helper thanks again and talk to you soon bye